Hey. Hello. Hello. And we're back. We are back. Dude, I almost got Dude, I almost got scammed. Oh lord. Oh lord. Tell him. Uh, right before uh right before we started um the sheriff's department said that I had to come to jail or pay them through an Apple wallet. And you know those sheriff's departments they love to accept payment. <laughs> yeah, they like Zell. They like Cash <laughs> Yeah, and uh, for like half a second, you know, one of the only reasons I thought that it was legit is the guy had a Texas accent over the phone, which goes to show you how gullible I've become in my old age. He was like, "Hey, you got to go to jail. Or you got to pay me through an Apple Wallet." I, this is Sheriff Officer Michael Edwards, badge number two. And I was like, "Okay, this is fake," but there's a, always a part of my brain like when the fake IRS guys call. And they have, listen, this is going to sound bad. If they have an Indian accent, immediately know it's a scam. But if it's just a guy that sounds like our accountant, it's like, yeah, it seems like you really owe a lot here. Then a part of me thinks it might be real. You know what I mean? And I don't know if that's just me thinking that, like, you know, uh, Indian gentlemen can't work for the IRS. Or if it's just me. they can. If you're an Indian guy and you want to work for the IRS, go for it. Yeah, but it's just the the common, the, the amount of scams being led by. You know, white guys, white men, yeah. you know, <laughs> that's the, that's what I'm trying to get at. We're just so trustworthy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as a race, we've never really, we've done a lot pulled, of good, pulled, pulled the wool over anybody's eyes. No, as far as I know. Yeah. We've never shanghaied anybody. We've yeah. never, uh, it's fucked up that the term, uh, Indian, did you, you know the term Indian giver? No, I so, like, if I give you something and I'm like, Thomas, you can have this, and then I ask for it back, it's called being an Indian giver. Like, I'm an, like, I'm an Indian giver because I was like, yeah, you can have my lawnmower. And then, like, two weeks later, I'm like, bro, give me my lawnmower back. It's like uh, like a term to, like, pejorative towards Native Americans. But, like, if anything, like, we, you know what I mean? Like, they didn't give anything to us and then ask for it back. We kind of, like... Gave them stuff. Yeah, they did. <laughs> okay, what? What did they give? Land. <laughs> no, 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 no. They Thomas. Said, Thomas, said, no, buddy. You can have our land. And then they said, we want to live on all the most expensive land now. All the best land that it exists in the West. We want to have that. They have all of the best, most they arable. They tried to steal our national parks. Did you know that? Yeah, they did. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so cruel of them. It is, it is salt in the wound that... Um, the they live in places where like ghosts don't even go. You know what I mean? Like that's where they were relegated to. Like after everything was said and done, they like it there. <laughs> <laughs> and these are historical facts most people don't want to hear. Yeah, these know? are the this is the hardcore history podcast. Yeah, uh, whenever the Americans first got to America, mm-hmm. we were immediately at- it was sad because mm-hmm. we were here to make peace, but we were immediately attacked. <laughs> <laughs> by diseases <laughs> and guns and mm-hmm. they had horses we didn't have horses yet yeah and um you know they introduced liquor and tobacco into our society and made us you know got us addicted to gambling and all this sort of stuff we tried to show them agriculture you know how to cultivate the land mm-hmm. i like your approach to alt history because you take a you're taking you're you're taking a very difficult road a yeah. well-documented Essentially genocide, and you're saying it didn't quite happen that way. The narrative is they – we gave them washing machines. They could have washed the blankets we gave them, <laughs> and it's sad. This is like a bunch of pilgrims with a bunch of like GE. <laughs> Guys, all you have to do is you put it on heavy wash for like 30 minutes. Yeah. It's fine. It's great. Yeah. Uh, they didn't have any <clears throat> large-scale agriculture. They didn't have any – They didn't know how to grow anything. They didn't have – any roundup or anything like that. <laughs> they didn't have any Monsanto. phenols. Yeah, they didn't have, they didn't yeah, have they didn't. Monsanto. They uh-uh. didn't have all their rivers were pristine because they didn't know how to deal Poison with trash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. They didn't know you could just throw stuff in there. And it was really they, sad. They, yeah, all their rivers were crystal clear. You could drink straight from them. They didn't know about poisoning them yet. People they, used to be able to survive in Louisiana. It was really sad. Yeah, it was crazy. They had no idea how to um, like put toxic runoff. Uh, yeah. They didn't know how to kill they all didn't the flora. Lung cancer yet? Yeah, they did. Yeah, they they didn't have um, benzene, so they their brains weren't filled with like you know uh, traumatic or you know, traumatic <laughs> terminal brain cancers. Um, 
So it's really unfortunate. Tra- it, brain cancer can be a huge trauma for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. A lot of people don't know how to deal with it. Yeah, but I do. It's crazy um, that now that we are like we gave so much to every community that the white that we people use the term like colonized. I think that word's really disgusting. Yeah, it comes from the word corn. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. It, it, well, it came from maize. Yeah, they were the Indians were like, it's amazing what you guys yeah. have been doing f- for our people. Yes, I think you know. People talk about nothing ever getting nothing, better. Nothing good ever comes from colonialism. Mm-hmm. Imagine if everybody in Australia talked normal. <laughs> what would you even say about Australia? Mm-hmm. You know. It is. Um, and it, what was nice about Australia is they were able to create a society without killing off people. Yeah. Or without kicking anybody off their land. Canada, Australia, us. Um, yeah. You know, Jamaica. Jamaica. Uh, a tropical paradise made it into even more of a paradise. Mm-hmm. You know, we turned Jamaica into a real melting pot. <laughs> You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure we did. Without man. without us, Haiti wouldn't even speak French. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They wouldn't be able to, um, they wouldn't be able to listen to French synth pop and yeah. and and go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they couldn't date models at all. Yeah, now well, every Haitian dude you meet is dating a French model. An, yeah, an Italian sports car type bitch. Yeah. yeah. Well, and th- but that's that's the contribution that we offer the rest of the world. Oh, you guys have like your own type of shit here. What if we t- introduce you to drum and bass? How about yeah. Um, what if we introduce you to h- harsh chemicals? What if we introduce you to backbreaking labor and imperial super profit? Have you ever worn Patagonia before? Was yeah. Like have you ever worn a vest that's puffy in the middle of July? Nobody knows why we wear them, but goddamn, don't we look fucking crisp t- to death? You know what I mean? Yeah. Why have you ever thought about? Um, you know, getting into what's it like um, shorting stocks. Have you ever mm-hmm. thought about getting into real estate? Have you ever thought about getting into um, digital wallets? Yeah, you know, it's sad because the Native Americans didn't even have land contracts. Yeah, that was on them. Mm-hmm. They should have been more litigious. They should, yeah, they should have absolutely understood jurisprudence. And they, and and honestly. Look, we maybe maybe we could have done them a little bit better with like educating them on the contracts that we had them sign in a language they couldn't read. <laughs> but honestly, it's kind of on them that they didn't like take the the initiative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they didn't pull themselves up by their boots. Straight. It was said when we got here that there weren't any laws. Yeah, they were no. Yes, <laughs> they had no. We had to create laws the, from scratch. Yeah, they had no cultural. They had nothing. They had no rules. It was complete barbarism. They just lived like wild animals. Yeah, you know? and they then used now to look eat at raw fish like Gollum. L- yeah, and look at and then and you know we come in and we got look. All of us have been inbreeding on this island for a thousand years, so we know a thing or two about legalese. We yeah. know a thing or two about treating each other with kindness. It's not like we've been stabbing and shooting and chopping each other's heads off and shitting in the street for two thousand years. Right. Um, we we know how to live c- with civility. Oh, you guys kill each other? That's crazy. We don't do that over there. Here's a little concept for you. World peace. Yeah. And you know who invented it? Britain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the most peaceful society. The, the most peaceful people on planet Earth. It is fucked up that. Uh, like, imagine. It's crazy. They ruled the world for so long. And then, like, they come over, you know, they con- like, they make the American colonies or whatever. And then, like, it's like your little brother being cooler than you. Which you can't have under no circumstances. Yeah. Like your little brother gets more yoked than you and can like beat you up. That sucks. That means you're a pussy. That means you fucked up. That's, you know, the relationship between, you know, because how old is Britain? Like a thousand years old or something. It's crazy. Yeah, like at least a hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're only like 270 something. 250. Two. 200 and. 1776 plus 200 is 1976. Uh, and then plus 15, 2026. 20, so they're like 240 something years old. Cool. Thanks, man. It took me a while to do basic. <laughs> Did you see how long I had to think about doing basic math? Mm hmm. Um, That's okay. You know, uh, above all else, we are 
We're data guys. We're um, numbers history guys. History numbers. So I got a history number for you. What? 420. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to make history for the most blends, blizzies smoked in a freaking lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll up so many big ass jumbo jets and oh, get fucking. Oh, yeah, here. sucking down the motherfucking weed, sucking on weed cylinders. Yeah, I love smoking out of my fucking bong. Ooh, taking uh, my bong down to lo- the throat. <laughs> like hanging out with like a new group of guys. Dude, give me that. Let me hit that bong. I want to take it down my throat. <laughs> <laughs> did you oh. ever? Did you ever smoke with somebody who put their mouth around it? <laughs> dude, Never, dude. Ah, uh, I had it happen to me. Dude. I had it uh. happen to me one time. I was uh, I was at the co-ops. Um, immediately ruined the whole vibe of everything. We were at uh, UT has. It's like the co-op row. Basically, it's like if frat guys and sorority girls were like into the garden and like were into like yeah, yeah. Manet or whatever the fuck. Like they all, they're all trust fund kids, but they're all like, I fucking love Mao Zedong. And you're like, sick, man. That's awesome. Um, anyway, we were doing whippets and smoking in this girl's little like fucking hut over there in the co-op. And um, dude, it was one of my friends that did it. So, you know, at that point, it's like uh, we were. We're listening to Tom Waits, and it's like, that's terrible music to listen to. <laughs> you're getting high. He's like, I took down nails. And you're like, what? I didn't put it on. She put it on. I was like, fuck, whatever. This is cool. You know, we're listening to like pirate rock, like the, like music that the devil listens to. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Everyone thinks it's like Cannibal Corpse. It's not. It's Tom Waits being like, cooking up a pig in the middle of the Vietnam, whatever. And we're all passing around a bong. We're all hitting it. You know, I give it over to my buddy Jack, and he fucking just. Puts his whole, he had never, like, I guess he had never, he was a very sheltered kid, and, like, I had, we had, like, gotten drunk together a couple times, and he told me, like, he had, like, only had, like, one beer before, and he was like, oh, yeah, I've smoked out a bong before, and we were like, oh, yeah, cool, like, of course you have, and he just, like, couldn't get suction on it properly, and was, like, choking, like, the water was getting in his mouth, and he was like, here you go, and we were just, we were all like, I was like, yeah, man, thanks, <laughs> thanks, bro, and he was like, dude, I got, like, a big hit off of that, right, and I was like, it was like smoking weed with an eight-year-old. <laughs> That's, I was like, and and I, after like, he was like, "Oh, where's the bathroom?" And he like goes to the restroom, and like I'm sitting in there with this the girls. We're all smoking weed at, hanging out at, and fucking Tom Waits is like, "And I took his life, I cut his heart out of his chest, and I'm the evil man, and I go to the woods." And she's like, "Is that your girlfriend?" And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And he lives in the dorms with me. She's like, "He like drooled in my bong," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah." He's, his parents like. They're like missionaries. He didn't know. what he, He's never done anything. And she was like, I really don't want him to come back. And I was like, I have to take him home. <laughs> she was like, I don't want him. His vibes are fucking with me. I, I, he drooled so much. And like, she's like, I have to pour this out. And I was like, he comes back and we're like, I'm like, hey, man, like, dude, I, um, if you, you think about going home? Like, <laughs> it's like and, and she was like, oh, yeah, you guys like, don't you have class? And I was like, oh, yeah, sure. We got to go back to class. And I'm like on the way home. So impossibly high, the both of us, and he's driving, and he was like, was I being weird, bro? And I was like, nah, dude, like, dude, you're honestly, like, super, like, you're super chill, because he's always self-conscious about hanging out with, like, our friend group, because he, like, is very sheltered. He, like, never drank or did anything, like, never went to parties or anything. He was like, dude, was I, like, chill? Like, sometimes I get in my head, bro, like, you know, like, I never really, like, my parents were so strict, like, and I was like, nah, dude, honestly, you were, like, way cool, like, you were super chill, and he was like, Thanks, man. It really like means a lot. Like, cause like I just feel like, like, dude, I never smoked out of a bong before, so I just feel like I was hitting it weird. I was like, nah, dude. Like, you cr- you crushed. It. <laughs> like having to talk, yeah. having to like give him a pep talk about smoking weed. I was like, dude, you smoked weed super normal. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the most, dude. Honestly, Snoop Dogg would be like, dude, he's a pro- professional weed smoker. <laughs> this is so fucking shitty. And uh, yeah, well, I never really went back. Yeah, I hate I hate bongs because I used to. My problem would be I would always, I would never be sober when I hit the bong. Yeah, yeah. And my problem would be that you didn't w- need to smoke, right? Yeah. It wore. I was already high, also, and mm. then I hit the bong, and I would really misjudge. I would try to do an impressive rip every time. Of course, you want to milk it. Yeah, yeah. And then I would. One time, I remember fucking up so bad. Mm-hmm. I had just shotgun three beers back to back to back. Beautiful. Walked over to the bong, and it's pitch black outside, uh-huh. so I can't tell how it, if it's clouding or not. Uh huh. I'm so drunk, I her- heroic 
fucking um, amount Rip. of smoke in yeah, there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm taking it down, right? I'm going, this is way too much. And I light it again mm -hmm. as I'm still going. And mm -hmm. I don't know why I lit it again. But the whole bowl, I had to torch the whole bowl mm -hmm. in one hit. And then I fell asleep next to the AC unit. And then I threw <laughs> up next to where I was sleeping. <laughs> that the was my contribution to the party. For my 21st, there's still GoPro footage of this floating around somewhere. Uh, if I ever decide to run for mayor, which, you know, it's down the road for me. Of course, yeah. Um, what was it called? It was like an X out or like a black, like a cross. I forget. Like, But it's you shotgun a beer, you take a shot, uh, and then you um, snap a bong. Like a, like a fresh bowl, like you just take it all like in one bong rip or whatever. Forget what it's called. It has a name, like a college party drinking game name. I don't know what it is. But that's what it is. I loved doing those. And I loved doing them and being super fun to be around after. <laughs> but I wanted to up the ante. So I added an extra step to the Iron Man, you know, of consumption. So I just cut up three fat-ass rails of Coke in between the shotgun of the beer and the shot of Jim Beam. So, like, somebody set the GoPro up, kind of like how we set it. And it was like a table that we were playing beer pong on. And they were like, all right, like, go for it. And so, like, shotgun the beer, take the shot rail like fucking three lines and then they just clear the bowl and then the footage is me like i i snap the bowl my eyes like just go like wide because it all hits me at one time my heart doesn't know what to do it's like boom 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 like i feel it in my chest like getting like active palpitations because i just hit it with three downers and then like uppers you know and I, you watch my eyes go wide, and then I just go into the backyard, and then I, like, you see me through the back patio gates. Like, it's like I'm kind of out of focus because it was one of those shitty GoPros. And I just smash my head, <laughs> like, into the back fence. Like, just stand there like the dude from It Follows, just, like, for, like, a second. just And everybody's like, Jake. Everybody's, like, laughing. You know, like, Jake, bro, come back inside. And you just see me go, boom, and, like, smash my head into the back fence, which our neighbors, like, I think I told you, that was the house our neighbors, like, loved us. We were so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, the next morning, I woke up with, like, this really pounding headache, but not, like, a hangover headache, like, like, I gotten into a fight, and I, like, was asking my friend, like, roommates, like, I was asking Ed and, like, you know, Frank, and then I was like, man, did I, like, get into a fight last night? And they were like, I mean, you tried, but, like, no, no, no. And I was like, no, like, I feel like I got, like, punched. And they are like, oh, no, dude, after you did your little, like, you know, your fucking a marathon of drug abuse for your birthday you went outside and smashed your head into the wood planks of the fence over and over again for like 10 minutes and i was like none of you guys stopped me and they're like why would we it was very funny <laughs> i was like <laughs> like the kind of friendships where you're like no we're not going to stop you from doing that we love you but if you want to hurt yourself for our amusement you know of course it's yeah. totally fine yeah it's uh drugs are bad you should never do them no the new thing i'm getting into uh, for my 30th birthday is uh being like an old head sober guy. Yeah. And I'm just going to give a lot of sage advice to a lot of young guns at the skate park outside of the van. Like I'm going to have the van open where you can see the bed mm -hmm. and I'm going to sit in it and I'm just going to kind of pensively look like I'm thinking, you know, like I'm pondering, yeah, contemplating. Yeah. And I'm going to have my shirt off in of where you can see all the tattoos. So people know that I've had a hard and difficult life. And they, they see the tattoo of Snoopy. Yes. Had. They know that I'm a fucking, that I'm, that I did live hard and I did bang. In yeah. the set, you know, for sure. They're going to see tat the Snoopy tattoo where he's, he's got a sweater on and sunglasses. They're going to be like, dude, that guy's probably AB. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of the young guns are going to come up to me. They're going to be like, yo, like, I noticed you from uh, across the skate park. And I just couldn't help but notice your, like, insane vibe. Like, you just give off, like, like hard-ass vibes. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, yeah, but, like, it ain't all easy, this life. And they're going to be like, oh, my God, bro, like. Will you talk to me and give me, like, sage wisdom? And I'm like, yeah, hop in the van. We'll just lay back here, and we'll just talk about all your problems. And that'll be the time. That's, like, my next chapter yeah, I'm trying yeah. to get into. It's not creepy. No, it's just an no. old head passing It'd be creepy if, like, a regular guy did it. Like, <laughs> not somebody yeah. that looks like me. You no, know? no, you right, look right. sick as fuck. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you'd, dude, you look super normal. Yeah, <laughs> you have a very yeah. normal demeanor, normal head shape, normal body shape. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I used to do that, honestly, a lot. And, um... But I try and do it for like young kids, you know what I mean? Oh shit! Hey, keep going. We're not stopping. Uh, yeah. Forgot. Hey guys, sorry. The uh, charger was removed. Oh, you guys like seeing me like this, dude? Oh hell yeah! 
Well, whip get it back, little, throw it back for you. A bu- Thomas, do you like this? Not really. I'm looking away. Thomas, look at my fucking asshole, I'm dude. Not looking at Thomas, it. I'm looking at your girlfriend's plants. Looking yeah. at my fucking butt cheeks. Nope, not looking at it. Looking at my tasty ass looking butt. Looking away from it, actually. Looking at my tasty ass butt cheeks. Sorry. It's All right, okay. we're back to regular, regularly scheduled programming. Yep. But uh, yeah, like whenever I was a kid, I felt like I used to get babies a lot of advice. Oh, so you started them young. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, whenever I was like three, I would like go to to the nursery. I would go to the hospital mm-hmm. and I'd get in one of the little baby incubators. Mm. And then I would talk to the other little kids. Mm, okay. I'd say like whenever you guys get older, like, like you're going to have to, you know, like booby milk is nice and formula is nice, but you got to move up to soft foods. Yeah, you get, yeah. And then from there, you might get to eat a piece of a little piece of chicken or something. Your mommy might give you like a pepperoni from her pizza slice. You got to be yeah. ready for that. Yeah, you got to be ready yeah. for that type of shit. And then once you're like four or five, you probably start having sex. Yeah, you probably start eating cheesy bread and fucking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, I was a very wise child, I felt like. Like, I remember I used to write. Uh, Poetry. I, well, I used to write down math problems. And <laughs> and then I would take them to science centers. Yeah. And they would look at it and they would say, nobody's ever written this down before. Mm-hmm. Nobody's ever figured this out yet. Mm-hmm. And that was when I realized at an early age that I was a genius. And yeah. it's b- it was very hard for me because I would ask questions mm-hmm. that nobody else would think to ask. Mm-hmm. Like, what would happen if a f- if there was a frog mm-hmm. and it was 100 pounds mm-hmm. and it had human teeth? And when it opened its mouth, and it would flick its tongue out to grab a fly, but instead of a tongue... At the end, instead of a regular tongue, it would be a woman's vagina. Mm. And it would go up to regular guys and suck out all their cum. <laughs> they weren't thinking about it. And then yeah. the frog would live off of their g- boy cum. What would you do? <laughs> it sounds and like you got out of breath telling that story a little bit. Because uh, I get choked up. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah. you get would, intense. Yeah, yeah. I actually went to Science University. Whenever when you were I was seven? Seven years old. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Texas and Science University. Science of... No, this was uni- Harvard Science University. This was World Science Program oh, University. World Science Pro WSPU. That's a crazy yeah. university. Yeah, yeah. And I got a degree in um, in Sp- molecules in space molecules, right? In space molecules uh, yeah. as well as uh, um, Earth math, micro and micro or micro, micro animal studies, micro ma- ma- micro mathematics. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my, I remember I met Michael Mathematics there. Michael Math. Yeah, yeah Michael yeah, Math. Crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, we had him on recently. Mm-hmm. And uh but yeah, it's all been uphill from there cuz I told you about the genius competition, right? Yeah, you had you got you you had the the uh um the big genius scholarship to go to the I genius the, convention. I got the big genius scholarship to go to the genius convention mm-hmm. and when I got there, it was me, Lex Friedman, Elon Musk, Brett Weinstein, Brett Weinstein, uh, uh, his his Jeff, brother Jeff uh, Bezos. Evan Weinstein. Evan Weinstein. Joe Lonsdale, Barry Weiss. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember just sitting in the, it was like dream blunt rotation type. Mm-hmm. And y'all were talking about fucking <coughs> space time. Y'all were talking about yeah. like big ass ideas. Yeah. yeah. Free from the constraints of wokeness. Yeah. And that was a big turning point for me because I believe I was eight when that happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they were all grown ass adults. They didn't understand the concept of like woke and they didn't understand the like cultural and social pressures that were like uh, inundating their day-to-day lives and making it difficult for them to have radically insane ideas like um, ca- capitalism and like have radically insane ideas like an all-white university because I, those ideas had never been thought of before sometimes i wish i'd never invented wokeness whenever i was five yeah i know but you know what uh you can't control where your children go you know what i mean yeah, like you yeah. like you can you can raise them and you can teach them right but when you release something like that into the wild like you release like diversity into the airplane industry, then the motherfuckers start crashing. You yeah. Know? yeah. What if there was a woke scientist who was like, "Aha! I've discovered the new latte. I've just I've discovered the new app." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What? Is, yeah. yeah, millennial woke scientist. Millennial woke scientist. Yeah. Ah, finally. Voila. Mm-hmm. The brand new. Um, nails for girls to have more like, th- uh, more like she equals them he squared. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, 
A brand new vintage store in Williamsburg has <laughs> invented it. <laughs> vintage store. A vintage clothing store. A vintage store. They sell... Um, they Aha. Th- my new formula for thrifting the the best finds for your Etsy shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, I'm gonna I'm gonna go to the thrift store and then I'm gonna buy a pair of jeans and I'm gonna distress them and sell them for eighty dollars to cokehead Finally. gay guys. The perfect GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> the the perfect GoFundMe for my my three thousand dollar a month apartment in South Williamsburg. Let's see, a little bit of abusive living situation, uh, a little bit of, of co- ketamine abuse, mm. a little bit of um, homeless person. self-diagnosing myself with BPD, homeless white person of color, uh, yeah, a little bit of my dad works at Lockheed Martin, history of mental health issues, mm. a little Leave bit of vague, mm, a little bit of cocaine mm. abuse, recently knew a person who lost their job, phone note apology, literary degree. And then you get the coolest, chillest roommate in the world named Mr. Belvedere. Mr. Belvedere. <laughs> hey, man, nice to meet you, Mr. Belvedere. You know, I study I'm at Cooper Union. I'm studying, um, I'm studying like, uh, like moral architecture, you know, like the building blocks of like morality and then how it goes into like, because we really like, you know, like hostile architecture, like the way that we like build things that are like anti-homeless, sorry, anti-unhoused. Yeah. My dad works for the CIA, the group that does all the killing and molesting. I'd be scared to be named Bel- Belvedere because it almost sounds like Velvetier, like Velvet, like Velveteen Rabbit. So yeah. People would get you confused with the rabbit probably a lot. It's got to be fucked up to have a name that sounds like you should be something and then uh, like not be anything. I had a my first, like my freshman year, like government course, like one of my, you know, like you take your basics or whatever. Um the professor was talking about like uh, in America, we don't do things like the way that the crown does or had done where like if you were George Washington's son, it doesn't necessarily mean that you would get to be president. It doesn't work that way, you know, or whatever. Um, And then he proceeded to tell us that George Washington's great, great grandson um, was uh, like a manager at H-E-B in his hometown. Of like some small town in like uh, Virginia or not H E B. What's it? What's their version of it? The, the, uh, what's it? The Wawa or something? Or no Publix? Fuck it, whatever. It Publix was like their Florida. Yeah, yeah. It was like their. He was like, oh, you know, George Washington's like eighth degree great grandson. He um, worked at the grocery store by my place. It was a manager, and we were friends growing up, and he still lives there. And I was like. I know you're trying to make a point about like, you know, kings and nobility and like hereditary lines. But if if you were using me as an example where my great to the eighth power granddad was George Washington and you're telling people that I'm just a loser <laughs> and we were friends, like I would kick the shit out of you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would be personally offended that you were using me as an example of like, you know, greatness doesn't happen in a hereditary sense, really, in this country, which also is like a massive lie or whatever the fuck. It doesn't track. Yeah, I'm glad no I'm glad nobody in my family was like a great man. Well, like super famous, you know yeah. what I mean? Looks like Actually, the, I kind of do. Yeah, one second. Here we go back to the fucking business. That's all right. That's okay. Yeah, we'll be good. I wish that my grandpa was uh Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pender? Yeah, I was listening to a rap song on the way here that sampled Love TKO, and I thought about Old Pendergrass. But it was by Gunu. I don't know who that is. You haven't heard TKO by Gunu? No, brother. Fun fact about him. Mm -hmm. He actually... So, he... um, I think he might be from Atlanta. Mm. But he was supposed to... He did a song with 21 Savage. Mm -hmm. Where he did this, like, sick-ass, like, whisper flow or whatever. Okay. 21 Savage... Scrapped the song, uh huh, and then just stole that and used it for a different song that became like famous. That's pretty sick. So Gunu got no credit for it or anything. It was just like, I think it's cool that like people can in, like in the music industry. That's just like pretty common. Also, you, I wanted to ask you about this, just like, uh, but we're on the show, so it doesn't make sense. You see the movie that they're making about him, right? Twenty One Savage. 
and they're having Childish Gambino play him. I thought that was a parody thing. No, it's like a real movie, isn't it? I don't think so. Are you sure? I thought it was like a publicity stunt thing. Can you look? Do you have your phone on you? I'm like, I, I thought it was real, but maybe I got shanghai you know? I think they told people it was real at first, but I don't think they're I think the other GoPro are here, but that's okay. That's okay. We're going to get a new camera soon, you guys. Um, just as soon as Patreon runs us our fucking money. If you're watching this, uh, thank you, uh, Patreon support team, for being super chill and awesome. 21 Savage movie. Out of breath from Googling. Yeah, is it real? 21 Savage's American Dream by Movies trailer was a spoof. Ah, fuck. Damn. Sh- well, Club fuck. Shay Shay confirmed. Um, Thank you, Shannon. Uh, but yeah. I was about to say, that's like, imagine if, like, imagine if I made it, if they did a biopic about me and then you, like, like having your friend who's also in the same industry as you, like, play you is, like, kind of weird. Yeah. Like, if they did a Thomas biopic and I played you. Yeah. Or if, like, they did, like, um, yeah, if they did something like that, if, be they, crazy. If, if they did like a gay porn parody of your life and then you played yourself. Yeah, if they did a if they did a biopic of me and you weren't in it in any <laughs> way, that would be interesting. Did a black woman like, play like me. You play me, and then who plays you? Yeah, a black lady. That'd be cool. Like Lizzo. I'd support it. Yeah, you think uh, Lizzo like playing like my early childhood, <laughs> like like a like a young white boy in a trailer I like park. The idea that she's going to be alive long enough. To where we are famous and she can also play us in a movie, like she can move around and stuff. What do you What do you mean? She's she, uh, she's huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rich, yeah, she's no, so hugely fat. I think it Which was is fine nowadays. The way that like um, s- like the way that like progressive types of celebrity worship work is is that. People like Lizzo because they've got like the seal of approval, you know, for like uh, being like a defiant, you know, um, you know, not conventionally attractive person in an industry that's very harsh on women or whatever the fuck that may be the case that she can like do things that are like evil, like the whole DoorDash fiasco where she was posting like, damn, this stupid ass bitch didn't even bring me my fucking cannoli. People were like, dude, they make like eight dollars an hour in New York City. That she was like, well, fucking, damn, work harder then. And then the whole, like, uh, rumors that were around, like, how she's, like, not nice to her. Was that her with the DoorDash thing? Yeah, it was. There were many DoorDash shit talkers. Yeah. But then the point I'm trying to make is, if anybody else were to say that, it would be like, oh, yeah, no, like, fuck you. But because, yeah. so, like, Lizzo, they were like, well, DoorDashers should work harder. They really should. Like, yeah, some she, people she are... She got in trouble for... N- not letting her other dancers be fatter than her. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, uh. she like, or she would like call them fat and stuff. Yeah, which is awesome. Yeah, that's like if I called you white. I was yeah. like, dude, you're white, dude. You need to fucking, you need to learn your goddamn manners. You need to be nicer to fucking. White people need to learn their manners. White people need to learn their, how to fucking speak. How to what listen. What happened to a nice young white man? Now they're all freaking. All the white boys are trying to be quirky. Well, one thing's for certain, we've got Shane Gillis and Sidney Sweeney, and Wokeness is dead now because they're fucking famous. And no more of this fucking goddamn pink hair, fucking woke comedy and woke TV shows about how it's good to have homo gay sex. We're going back to business. We're going white comedian who's insanely famous for just being funny. We're going to... A pretty A-list actress with Mrs. Tits. Yeah, Mrs. Tits and Mr. Retard. <laughs> yeah, that's where that's how you know America's back because yeah. we've never had an A-list actress with what huge. What is Shane Gillis funny for being uh, the best comedian out right now? Yeah, being a nice guy and a funny comedian. Well, what is he? Yeah. What is Sydney Sweeney famous for? Being a good actress and have, and being beautiful, <laughs> it's like being a you know a I, conventionally attractive woman. I, I'll admit I haven't seen anything with Sydney Sweeney in it, but I ever watch Euphoria? Uh, no, I watched about five minutes of it, and there was a little girl sucking dick in a car mm-hmm. immediately, and I went, I, I, it's not that I don't think the show should have been made, uh, I just don't think it's my kind of show. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, um, say something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come clean on the show to you guys and to you, Thomas. When I was living, and when I got randomly assigned my roommate, um, 
when I first moved to San Marcos like five years ago, um, uh, shout out Austin. Um, I was 25 years old. He was 19 years old and he went to Texas state randomly assigned. Um, I was a, a guy in his mid twenties, an alcoholic. Uh, and he was just, you know, like a kid, um, hanging out with his friends, trying to bring people over to the apartment and be like in college or whatever. Mm. And they would have euphoria watch parties, him and like all of his friends. Mm -hmm. And there would be like, it's, it's for that age group at the time, 2019, like kids who were born 2000, 2001, like it's their skins. You know what I mean? Like it's their fucking whatever. And I would come out kind of like, kind of like a dad that like wants to know what the kids, like I would yeah, come, yeah. come out of my room like, what y'all watching? And they're like, oh, uh, it's euphoria. Um, it's like, um, I don't know. It's like. They're like, oh, like, did you watch Skins? And I'm like, no. Isn't that like, like one of them sex shows where the kids like they go to school and they, you know, have sex? And they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, oh yeah. Who's uh? Oh, maybe they like. I was just like, oh, that's Zendaya. Okay, I got it. And I just had this moment where I was like, I watched like a couple episodes because I was like trying to like, oh, like we should at least like we don't have to hang out, but like maybe I should be nice. I thought it would be nice to like, oh, I'll sit down. I realized like, no, like I was. I didn't need to be in the living room. <laughs> I just so I like went to my room and just watched the Sopranos and like, but I had a moment where I was like, oh, like I am, like this is not for me. You know what I mean? Like this show isn't for me. Yeah, it's for Drake. Yeah, yes, it's for Drake to jack off to. Um, they were like, I felt bad because I was like, oh, dude, I'm like this like loudly breathing fat alcoholic old head that lives in this apartment where these kids are like trying to smoke weed and watch the sex show. Yeah, I need to sit in my room and watch The Simpsons like I was born to do. Yeah. You know? Back in my day, we jacked off to magazines and they had pictures of people getting killed. In there. <laughs> <laughs> Back in my day, we had di a different type of porn than what y'all had. We they uh, we had you know videos of women getting brutally eviscerated. They're, you know, you think that magazines are tame stuff, but did you know that Ted Bundy and a bunch of other serial serial killers were caught with the same. Brutal magazine about torture and rape <laughs> and stuff, and p people think that you know a lot of it could be CIA involved, just getting the most twisted fringe individuals mm -hmm. to jack off to chainsaws and stuff, and then next thing you know, or in the back of a van getting fucking eaten. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you kids have a good fucking night. I gotta really work on some shit. I gotta work on myself. I've been really trying to work on myself, guys. So, uh, I'm going to be in my room. I'm not going to be doing anything in there. If you need to come in there for something, if, you know, if the fire alarm goes off something, you just let me know. I but just had a, a realization, man, that the thing you just did, I might, when I'm a father, say something like that to my sons or my daughters because I know that I'm not going to be able, as they get older, to hide the fact that I'm like a CIA she did everything the serial killing guy so like the same way that my dad was like hey it's called skull and bones okay this george bush john Kerry thing these elections they're dog and fucking pony shows son they're all part of the same yale clubs skull and bones society google it look it up all these elections are fake they have to they them boys they got to go in a coffin and masturbate and drink goat's blood when i was like 11 i was like okay cool and by the way they did 9 11 i'm like oh swag cool when i'm like 50 and i have a son I'm going to be watching, you know, he's going to be watching TV and I'm going to be like, yeah, that guy's CIA, you know. Oh, you know, Ted Bundy, he was in, he was, they hired him to kill women to make people scared and hate each other. <laughs> it's all, you know, it's all in this book I read that's really well researched called Program to Kill <laughs> that no one, that is 100% real and legitimate. I don't know how I'm going to handle that. You shouldn't tell your son that type of stuff, but I think it would be, it's probably inevitable, you know, that I hit him with a little bit of those truth nuggets that I got. You know my truth nuggets? Yeah, I love your nuggets. <laughs> Bro, I'm going to be, I'm not even going to get super in conspiracies. I'm just going to make shit up to mess with my kids' heads. You should, man. People do that type of stuff. Oh, <laughs> you watching Caillou? I remember whenever I was, I was a kid, he was black. They turned him white. Yeah, because of wokeness. <laughs> yeah, he used to be a black kid. And instead of Caillou, his name was Kai Hey. <laughs> There was an old episode back in the day where he skinned his dog, and it was so horrible that. But they made us watch it at school, and, <laughs> and uh, they and our, you know, they make you say the, they make you say the pledge of allegiance at school still. Yeah. Whenever I was in school, it was two hours long. 
And if you didn't get it right, they fucking shoot you with a god. They fucking shoot you with a fucking mine. With a mine. <laughs> they shoot, they a, shoot mine. a mine at you. They shoot a mine at you. <laughs> <laughs> Go off, kill everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just like out of one of those t-shirt guns at like baseball fields they just shoot a fucking like a claymore mine at your head boom boom that's how you take care of the enemy brother oh it's gonna be a good good summer i could tell whenever i was a kid it was about two three hundred degrees a lot of times and we'd sometimes you'd uh go down a slide at the playground and your all the skin would come off your back yeah, you'd just be bones and they call you mr bony butt dude you didn't want to be mr bony you didn't want to be mr bony butt because if so you had to sit they, with your back on the ceiling yeah and they and it took three to six weeks for your skin grafts to come in from the skin store and everybody would call you bony butt they'd call you fucking dead dead child People saw, you know, they say Joanne's Fabrics is going bankrupt, but there never was a Joanne's Fabrics. They made it up. Yeah, like the most innocu- like the most pointless. <laughs> you know, I hop whenever I was a kid. It was stood for International House of Pussy. Of, of yeah, International House of Pussy. And every time you went in there, there was a piece of pussy on the ground. You had to step on it like a doormat. And it'd make you slip like a banana peel. Yeah, sometimes it was dry. <laughs> Dry your feet off on the pussy when you walked in. <laughs> Sometimes it was dry. <laughs> now, y'all, it's rainy out. Dry your feet off on the pussy when you walk yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Get Hey, don't bring them boots in the house. Put them down on a pussy mat. <laughs> yeah, uh, we look, we, we're, we're a pussy-tainted family. Hey, carpets are sticky. Somebody bring pussy in the house? Yeah, yeah somebody. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's hey, look, it's it's musty in here. Somebody bring their pussy in. They didn't dry it off when they came in the house. Son, what I tell you about bringing pussy in the house, it Paul? You told like me like a pussy market in here, <laughs> like an old pussy ranching family, like they make leather. We've been raising pussies since the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, yeah. We well, got, that sounds really bad. Yeah, and anyway, there's no way for this character no to sound that, good. That's <laughs> an evil thing to do. We've been raising pussy for. 500 years, you know. Pussyhead Ranch. Rick Perry think he's got the... (laughs) Back when I was a kid, we didn't have pussy. We just had penis. We made the best of it. Yeah. You got to be lucky to just have so much bountiful pussy in and around the world. We had potatoes. We had green beans. And we had pussy sometimes. One of the, like, uh, gross things my dad used to say um, that I didn't know what it meant... um, he would see like an actress on TV, you know, like a, like, back in when she was like I said, like her early twenties, or like Scarlett Johansson, or like Jennifer Lawrence is like one, and uh, or like you know, be looking on his phone and whatever, see a trailer or something, and he would say verbatim, "Man, they didn't make them like that back in my day." And I was like, I was like, "What do you mean they didn't make them like that?" And he's like, "I just, man, you know, pussy just didn't, they didn't look like that, you know." It seems like they get hotter and hotter, like, every year. And I was like, wh- are you saying that, like, women are sexier than they used to be, like, in the 80s? And he's like, yeah. Ain't nobody. See, back in, you know, it was every now and then you'd see, like, a Miller Lite girl. But, like, damn, these girls just got their pussies out, like, like on the red carpet, like, with their little skirts and stuff. And I was like, <laughs> he would say this when we would be at, like, Whataburger. This is not, like, a living room. We would be, like, out to eat at Chili's. And, like, they just don't make. That Jennifer Lawrence girl, her, 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 she's posting pictures of her titties. They got leaked, and I was like, "Yeah, this is like the the what was the people calling it the on Rip? Yes, yeah. When that yeah. happened, my dad was like, "Dude, you see, they take pictures of their of their titties, and they fucking people leak them. You seen these?" And I'm like, "No, man." He's like, "Damn, I seen a couple, <laughs> yeah, whatever." And uh, anyway, that phrase stick stucks with me. Is like sticks with me is like, um, like I think the most like southern kind of like plant style thing one of the like the phrases you know like fucking uh raining outside devil's whipping his wife you know one of those like i didn't make them like that but like the perverted version yeah you know, like an old nasty fucking horn dog version which i hope to be able to re-embody like embody that with my children when i'm you know an old man yeah just asking to smell my son's fingers you know <laughs> yeah that's a. Uh, I don't know that i'll and My I'll dad pr- did that probably, with me. I'll, I'll probably be a eunuch. He was like, hey, let me smell them fingers, son. <laughs> it's rough. 
Anyway, he's dead, you know? Yeah, it happens. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, life is like, what are you doing? Where are you going, baby? My balls got stuck. Jiggle them on camera. I'm not jiggling. Hey, how does this look? Do you think I can shake? Do you like this? It's You're wearing black pants. I can't really. Looking good. You want me to keep doing it? Uh, you can if you'd like. Watch out for the Chinese evergreen. Yeah, Ashley doesn't like when I fuck her plants up. She doesn't like when I fuck her plants. She, <laughs> yeah. she gets real pissed when I put yeah. my penis in the fucking soil. I tell her, you know, it's good for the it's good for the protein or whatever yeah, the fuck. pH you know, balance. pH around. balance. Yeah. Oh, dude, H-E-B was running a sick-ass deal. Oh, yeah? I'm not even kidding. This is not a joke. If uh, they had, a uh, uh, like, the local clinic, like the community, free community health clinics there, if your blood pressure was 100... Uh, 120 over 80 or like within a healthy range you would get a $20 H-E-B buddy <laughs> gift card like me and my brother walk in and we looked at it and I was like dude that's the fattest thing I think I've like it's the most Texas thing one of the most Texas things I've ever seen like hey if your shit's not like 180 over 110 you can get a $20 gift card to H-E-B you can use it for sandwiches or like Damn, broccoli are they still doing that? they are we look if you want to go get one it's okay. I don't think my blood pressure is doing too good right now because I I drank some beer yesterday for the first time in a couple months and I I know that my shit's fucked. I've also had like a can of my rogues shit's today. always like one oh my my shit's always like one oh four over sixty four or something. That's pretty like low. Yeah. Like healthy, but like you're kind of teetering on being like too low right there. I feel yeah, like I just need to do more Adderall and stuff. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I mean my resting. Blood, r my le uh, resting, resting blood rate. <laughs> yeah, my heart rate used to be pretty high, but now it's normal. Yeah, mine was uh, when I was vaping. I would go to the doctor, and my blood pressure would be something, you know, like one seventy over, like for whatever. Um, and my resting heart it would be like ninety. And then when I quit vaping and like stopped drinking, it was like fifty. And I was like, oh, that's all you have to do, fifty, fifty-five, somewhere around there. That's all you have to do is just, you know, yeah, mine's like seventy, but um. I was it used to be like 105. <laughs> yeah, no, seriously, yeah. dude. Yeah, mine. I would just yeah. my resting heart rate when I was like really, really hitting it, hitting it heavy was always like yeah, 100. But I was, I don't, I don't know how true this is. I'm not a fucking doctor, but on one of those like Huberman style like healthy man podcasts, they were saying that um, like the standard resting heart rate in America that like is normal is like not normal anywhere else like like here it's like oh up to 85 is like a normal resting heart rate and the guy was like that is like not standard anywhere else i don't know how fucking true that is but apparently he was like saying like oh because most people are so obese here that it like fucks with the like the average or whatever you know what i mean mm. like the average heart rate or whatever i don't know how fucking true that is because i'm an idiot and i'm not a doctor yeah, I'm, my favorite thing going on right now is guys saying that nicotine is good for you because it's a nootropic. Yeah, I love that one. That one's good, too. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad you can just fucking say that. It you it know means. how many billions of dollars have been spent on not being able to say that nicotine is it's good, good for, for you? you? Yeah, yeah, And yeah. then it turns out you can just say it, and the, the, so nothing far, happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, how many people have had, like, their lungs removed and like their jaws cut out. Yeah, like if you smoke, you should switch to something smokeless. Yes, a hundred percent. Like yes, if you dip actual tobacco, switch to zins. You yes. know what I mean? Like, obviously better to quit. But like, I fucking every once in a while I'll have a cigarette or something. Like I'm not, I can't really preach about it. But I do feel a lot better now that I don't smoke every day. Yep. You know? um, yeah. Yeah. Going but, from but like telling people that nicotine is good for you, like come on, don't fucking. <laughs> you can just say it feels good and it's a sacrifice and, I'm willing to make. And it's a stimulant that like it does. Yeah, it stimulates your brain. So does fucking crack cocaine. <laughs> I'm yeah, sure yeah. crack cocaine grows parts of your brain. Yeah. It just destroys some of the other. It parts. makes you really, really lean. Yeah. It does make you like. Look awesome. Guys on heroin a lot of the time have fucking sick ass Abs. physiques. <laughs> and it makes no sense. <laughs> they all look like models. Yeah, yeah. I was I was thinking the other day, like, you know, the whole cliche model thing where like they're all on meth or Adderall and they like barely eat and, and they look, you know, great or whatever. Like some of my dad's friends that were crackheads, and my dad at the time of his like the height of his like crack addiction. They all looked, they all worked the plants. So they had, you know, built in 
um, kind of like workman's str- bodies. You know, they were like not yoked, but like all my dad's friends were like pretty like in good shape. And none of them really worked out all that much. My dad worked out quite a bit. But I was always thinking, and it never dawned on me until I got older. I was like, like, dude, all these guys drink like 100 beers a day. And they work out in the heat. And, like, I've only ever seen them eat, like, roller taquitos and, like, Tyson Anytizers and, like, TGI Friday's waffle fries and, you know, like, dog food for humans, like, hungry man yeah. dinners. And all of them are, like, you know, not fat. And then I was like, oh, if you work out in the sun all day and lift pieces of iron and take them up ladders and then don't eat and smoke crack and then at night eat, like, 6,000 calories worth of meat, you'll probably get a pretty decent physique. You won't be healthy, you know. Yeah. It's like the Rich Piana method, kind of, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Intro to Rich Piana, I will say. Rich Piana was so sick. I, I had wish to exp- he was still alive. I had to explain him to Ashley the other day. We were, like, trying to find something to watch on. Uh, she had never seen him before. And we were trying to find something to watch on Amazon, and his documentary came up because I'd been watching a bunch of, like, I'd watched, like, a couple fighter documentaries, so I guess it just, like, yeah. you know. And she was like, oh, my God, what, what is that? And I was like, I scroll back. I was like, that man? And she was like, why does he look like that? And I was like, babe, that's Rich Piana. Man's a legend. Rest in peace. And she was like, what's wrong with him? And I was like, oh, he's completely insane. You know, but Rich Piana was like one of the few like bodybuilder guys. It's like, you don't want to. <laughs> I'm cursed. Like, I loved his interviews where he was like, look, you don't want to do this. Anybody who wants to do this, you need to understand, like, I don't got much time left. You know, he was always just kind of like very open or what I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. But, you know. She was like, I didn't know guys could look like that. And I was explaining to her, I was like, there's bodybuilders. And then there's guys who are like profoundly mentally unwell. And they're also bodybuilders. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, like outside of like Cutler, like if he's like the cutoff point, guys like Piana, she like, she just didn't know that people could get that big. And I was like, no, he's on like, he was on so much shit. Like if you load your body up with bovine growth hormone, like you can look like a monster or whatever. Yeah. He would, his like pre-workout routine, he would do like five scoops. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Of like the heaviest, the old jacked or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Scariest shit. And he was also like, and he had it in a fucking pitcher. Mm-hmm. He was he was running, um, Deca and like Tren and then Winnie, and all the cool stuff. Yeah. Um. And uh. Yeah, like having to. She's because like obviously she knew what steroids were. I guess like she just never seen somebody like that. And then it made me think. I was like. Oh, like, it is crazy that some guys, like, have the kind of, dysmor- like, body dysmorphia where, like, you look at yourself and you're, like, and when you're that big and you're, like, I'm, I look like shit. Like, I look small. You know what I mean? Like, it's sad, yeah. but it's also, like, damn, how? Those guys are, like, over 300 pounds. Yeah, like, 320, 330. Yeah, yeah, yeah lean or whatever the fuck. Um, rest in peace to a, to a legend, you know? Um, was it him or was it Ronnie Coleman that was, like, uh, was like, oh, one of my, you know, one of the people I'm training said they're getting tired of eating chicken and chicken all day, chicken, chicken, chicken or whatever, chicken and beef. It tastes bad. You ain't eating for the taste. You're eating to fucking look like amazing or whatever. And then like it cuts to them like in the gym, like their skin has like split because they're like on the squat rack, <laughs> like the striations have like made. And I was like, oh, like that's why you do it. You know what I mean? Like you're not yeah. eating like the way that's like fighters will eat chicken, rice and broccoli to get down to 155. They're not doing that to get down to anything. You're just eating 10,000 calories of whatever the fuck, you know, like yeah. food or whatever the fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting hobby. I respect it. I do. I, I unironically do. It, uh, it takes so much work and dedication and money. And there's not a lot of money in it from what I understand. Unless you're like a, you it, know, when, I mean, it, nowadays I feel like there's more in it because of Instagram and stuff. But yeah, you have yeah. to know, you have to not only be big but like charismatic, and know how to build an audience. Mm-hmm. If you can become, like, if you if you can harness your body or whatever, yeah, to right. like, <laughs> I get, love having get my- sponsorships or whatever. I feel like. That's a bigger deal nowadays than, like, winning competitions and shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's like, uh, the, uh, who's the guy? He's, like, the best wrestler or whatever. Uh, not WWE, but, like, uh, Jordan Burroughs was, like, saying, like, everybody's, like, he said something, I'm paraphrasing, was, like, oh, everybody's telling him to, like, get into MMA. 
he like, doesn't want to. He wants to stay as a wrestler. But he's like, people think re- like wrestlers don't make money. Like if you're just like a freestyle, like guys will make the transition to WWE or you, or MMA to like make actual money. But like you can be the best wrestler in the world and you make like a hundred grand or whatever the fuck. Same with bodybuilding. It's like you can have all the fucking. Who's the guy that was like the Mister Olympia, C bum? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he has money, but like because he's famous or whatever. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Crazy that that. Uh, those guys are all like five. It's like better to be like five eight, five yeah. nine, or whatever. But uh, Bumstead's taller, I think. I think he's like five eleven. Is he? F- but for the classic physique, it's different, or at least it used to be. Uh, okay. They changed the rules this year. They like shift them every few years. Mm, okay. So like at last for a few years in a row, his physique was like the ideal physique that they wanted. Uh huh. But they kind of want him to retire, so they can because like he's won like five times in a row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they made it to where, like, they're not necessarily looking for height. They're not necessarily looking for, like, they want, a, like, a mass monster more of, even though it's a classic division. Mm-hmm. So I kind of. They just I, want a big ass son of a bitch. Yeah. But I'm like, if it's a, cl- I mean, obviously I'm not a bodybuilder, but I'm interested in that world. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know. They should have, a, they should have like, a, like a Mr. Olympia for having the most normal penis. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, just the most, like, three and inches soft, like, five and a half hard, maybe yeah. six, if you're, like, really pushing down at the base, you know? Yeah, yeah. And for the, like, for the loosest balls. Loosest balls. Like, because be nobody wants a tight, taut sack. They want, right. like, a big set of heavy they hangers. They want, like, something that's, like, hard, to, like, you have to look at for a while. Yeah, understand. what David hit Goliath with. That yeah, kind of, like, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the rock and the big sack or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I would. Definitely. What if instead of have like if the thing about porn instead of men having big dicks, it was just having a fat set of nuts? That'd be cool. Do you think That'd we would? Nice do you think nine eleven would have happened or like the Bengali famine or any of that tough stuff? I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe the guy with the biggest straight guy with the biggest butt. Straight guy with the biggest butt, and you have never could have done anything gay. Yeah. No, no a girl couldn't gay. have even put her finger in your ass. Nothing yeah. even remotely. Get, couldn't even. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. That ever happened to you? Any girl try to slide a finger in your butt? Nope. No? Never came up. Respect. Never got asked anything. Nobody ever hit you up like, hey, let me fucking dig around in there. I think I got asked one time and I said nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. It's so hard. Like, having known you for a while and we're, like, you know, friends and shit. We do the show together. Like, I'm, I can't. If I try to picture it in my mind of a girl posing that question to you, like, I just, my brain blue screens. Like, I can't even picture you even responding to anything like that or how you would respond. Like, it's literally what I'm seeing is you doing exactly what you did just now where she's like, hey, like, you try to, like, exploring, like, try, like, you know, like, you're like, "Mm." I think I'm all right. "Mm." Like, when you try to give a kid, like, uh, like, vegetables and they go, (laughs) <laughs> how about we just watch the show how about, how about we just uh, came do what I came here to do which is to have sex with you missionary for about four and a half minutes and then I go get an Uber home so it's going to be bad either way yeah so yeah how about how about we don't that? need to push the boundaries because I'm I'm playing for the minor leagues at best the best I could do is triple A you know yeah yeah I'm probably pitching like 72 miles an hour on a good yeah. day. You're the hot one. I'm funny sometimes. Yeah. On a, Yes. When this I is <laughs> a mistake you're making. It's not one I'm making. <laughs> we don't have to make me make mistakes. I, I love that. That's yeah. Yeah. You are a really hot woman and I do not know why you even let me hang out with you. So yeah, you're the one who makes mistakes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm 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 fucking batting up. This is kind of. This is you're going to look back on this era of your life as something was profoundly wrong with you. Yeah. And I'm going to say, damn, I used to have it like that. You know what I mean? I, y- y- your husband won't know about me because you'll be embarrassed, mm-hmm. not because it's something he would be insecure. Mm-hmm. About. Yeah. It's not like anything even because bad. Because it lowers it. I'm the only guy you'll ever be with who lowers your real estate. Value. Yes. Yeah. You are. You know how red pill guys talk about like a low value woman. Had you never met me, you would have you'd have been you know. I'm a low value man. Yes, yeah, very low value, honestly bargain bin type guy, you know. Or was this? Or was now? You're probably like a cheesecake factory, you know. I think cheesecake factory. Like you're nice. Thank like you. I, I and, and I'm I'm not saying I'm not trying to big dog you. I'm like a Chili's, I think, or maybe like Nah, I don't want to give my. I'm a Longhorn Steakhouse. 
That's what's up. Just like a chain restaurant. You I know. like the that we can only think of our, ourselves in terms of chain of food. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of like a Brahms where you could get ice cream. Yeah, and yeah. Maybe. Milkshake. Well, what val? I mean, what other ways? I'm an American, so I think of everything in beef. Uh, I probably like, you know, having had several, both of us have had so many iterations of ourselves in such a short period of time. The lowest, the time in your life where you are of the lowest value and where I was of the lowest value, according to this world, the uh, Alpha Male podcast world, not that long ago for either of us, you know. Yeah. Only, only gone by about four or five years, you know. How would you, what value would you place on yourself dollar wise? If, if, if a thousand dollars is like Andrew Tate, you know, if, if it's like a, a real sexy millionaire alpha, how, where would you place yourself like money wise? At the, at the lowest? At the lowest. Like five dollars? Five bucks? Respect. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of it as how much a woman would be willing to spend on a date with me. <laughs> And I think five dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, good. fair, fair. That's so. You know what, dude? Kind of makes me nostalgic for like when I thought genuinely like a good date, like I had gone out of my way was going to Little Caesars, getting two five dollar hot and ready's, and then just be like, hey, you want to come over and like, you know, we could just eat this pizza and I we could maybe have sex. Like if you're cool. <laughs> If you're cool with it, which like, that's a cool, I feel like that's a proper date for when you've been with somebody for, you know what I mean? Like you've been, but like, you know, date one, you always want to try to like, make it seem like you're not a complete loser, or at least that's how I felt when I was younger and more insecure. If that makes sense. You want to like, you want to spend the last $70 you have on a dinner date. You know what I mean? Like you're going to, that's how I would do it. Like you'd blow your last wad on like taking them to a cheesecake factory or to, you know, an outback, which to me was fancy schmancy. I don't know. Sometimes. I feel like uh, I haven't been on that many dates before. But uh, I'm just trying to think of first dates. You know, One time I asked a girl to go see the Lego Batman movie with That's me. That's awesome, for a dude. First date, and then we dated for almost a year after that. <laughs> Nice girl. Um, um, but we ended up not going. Turned out she didn't want to see the Lego Batman movie. Uh, but it was okay. Um, I, I've been, I guess, I'm trying to think of. Fr- one time on a first date, I took a girl to the Cheesecake Factory and I didn't know, uh, I didn't have any money on my card. So it turned out I could only pay $4 of the bill. I, uh. That was bad. I feel bad about that one. Not I, really. I paid, I, I, uh, I Apple paid her back, so it was fine. Um, I, one time I, I had a, I had a crush on a girl, Thomas. I don't know if you've, Gay? Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was crushing really, really hard. Like, just like really like, I was like down bad. I was simping. Yeah. I'm, I'll stop. I'm sorry. I can see you were having, I'm, I apologize for that. It's okay. <laughs> just don't do it again. No. Uh, so I took this girl out to this like lakefront coffee place and, um, uh, it was like my go-to like first date if I didn't have any ideas. I was like, oh, I'll just go here. And uh, on the way home, she like asked me to pull over, and uh, she threw up out of the side of the car. And then I was like, oh, what's up? Like, um, like you okay? And she was like, oh, I don't know. Like maybe the desserts were bad uh, or whatever because we'd gotten like some cream uh, like donut things at the coffee shop. Uh, for context and to maybe to uh, give you a hint of where this story is going, I was driving the Crown Vic at the time and I hadn't cleaned it out for quite some time. I thought she was cool. I thought she'd be a cool girl. Be like, oh, he's got a little bit of a dirty car. He probably is a good writer. He's probably like a like a book, like a kind of a cool guy. Anyway, uh, she told me, she fed me that line of shit like, oh, maybe the desserts were bad. Well, like two weeks later, her friend, um, uh, we were like, I was like bringing drugs over to their place and was selling them some weed and some Adderall and being a cool ass motherfucker. And, uh, she was like, Oh yeah. Um, you know, I did with my roommate. Right. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, she said your car smelled so bad that she had you pull over and throw up. That's pretty funny. You should clean your car out, man. And I was like, no, nah, she said it was because we ate those, we ate these like cream croissant things. She said they were bad. She was like, Jake, what? That's not a food. Like 
It's not like sushi. Like, it, dude, your car really stinks. You should clean out, clean it out. Like, she was like really kind of like disgusted, but she didn't want to seem mean. And I was like, nah, that, that can't be it. It's probably their croissants. And she was like, dude, we live together. Like, this is my. I'm trying to do you a favor. Like, she's she was really cool about it. She was like, I. She's not gonna say anything to you. She's very very like. She's she's nice. She's one of my best friends. She's not gonna say anything. So like, if y'all go out again, just like maybe clean your car out, dude. She's like, what do you even have in there? And I was like, dude, like eight or nine like Whataburger bags like in the back seat with like maybe some fries left in them, and then like fifteen Red Bull cans on the passenger seat where she was sitting, and then like there's like twenty empty packs of cigarettes back there, and like maybe some vomit for me and like the driver's side, but like nothing crazy. You know, it's like a normal thing. I didn't say that, but I was like, oh, it's it's kind of messy or whatever. And she was like, can I go see it? Can I just, like, give myself, like, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she goes out of the car and, like, opens it, and she's like, dude, you're, did you think that she was going to go out with you again? <laughs> like, it was yeah. so fucking gnarly. And then, like, I come back home to my uh, my roommates, and I mistakenly, I got, I was drunk, and I was, like, kind of, like, I was insecure, you know? And I was like, dude, you remember that day, uh, I, yeah, girl, Caitlin? Like, yeah, 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 whatever happened with that? Like, we haven't seen her around. And I was like. Dude, like she said, remember I was like, oh, I had to pull her over. She had to throw up. So she had food poisoning. Oh, it's because my car smelled so bad. <laughs> and I don't know why I said that because like for like a month after they were like, hey, dude, like if you ever plan on getting pussy again, you should like pressure wash the inside of your car. <laughs> 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 with, with that fucking, and I was like, damn, man, that fucking sucks. We did not go on another date. I texted her. I was like, hey, like, uh, you know, I hope you're feeling better. Like. You know, this was like three weeks later. Food poisoning doesn't last that long. Yeah. But I was like, hey, hope you're feeling better. Like, would really like to go on a date again and like left me on scene. And then like the next day I was like, hey, uh, dude, I haven't done this a lot, but it was one of the times where I like, I know how to take a hint, but I was like, I got to, I got to get this get back. I got to like, maybe I got to detail my car. Maybe I'll wear a button up. I really wanted to like do a better fucking give a better set a better example be better yeah. be a better man and uh yeah i fucking triple texted dude i was like yo like if anything happened like because i wanted her to fucking say it you know what i mean like, if anything happened bro like you can tell me dude like i'm cool and she just she was like uh i just like it was just kind of like i don't know like the car situation was just kind of like but i understand you know like some people and i dude i was like the whole rest of the day i was like Nah, she's stupid. <laughs> she's a yeah, she's a bitch, funny. dude. It's, it's funny when you're young and like shit just doesn't work out with a girl. And even if it's it's like, it wouldn't. Not that it becomes like a conflict, but like in your head, you're like, yeah, she's like like a bad person. Yeah, she doesn't understand what and I'm. And then worth. you get older and you're like, why was I trying to go on dates with people who I had nothing in common with? Yeah, and who yeah, like, yeah. But it's life. Yeah, yeah. Well, like like at the time being like, damn, like. I'm a catch like being overconfident. I was like, I used to be like, ah, damn, like this girl doesn't want to hang out with me, dude. I'm funny. Like I have my, like I'm going places. I'm going to be a lawyer probably in like five years. (laughs) Like just like, like telling myself that I will be somebody worth loving in like 48 months. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, Somebody worth hanging out like you just got invested. Do you me. think you can find another guy like me at a state university? Do you think you can find another guy who's going to get his life together in seven years? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you can find another guy who's like going to really, really burn a lot of bridges and then get his life together out of like basically forced to at 26 years old? It's not going to happen, baby. I'm the only dude at this school who's still going to be partying in 10 years. <laughs> That that shows you that I know how to have a good time and I like take care of myself. Like I care about my mental health. I'm not all business. I'm fun. <laughs> and you be like the drugs lawyer, the lawyer who does drugs. I'm like fun. Yeah, yeah. It's like fun to be in court with me. Oh uh, yeah, I'm like a drugs lawyer. Like oh you like oh you like a public defender. Like you help people who get like drug charges. No, I I, I dropped out of law school to do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're listening to this. Um, this is the free episode. That means go to patreon.com slash pendejo time to check out more of these sick fucking badass episodes, uh, an extra a month for just $10. If you just want the free audio episodes, you can keep listening to those. We also do premium episodes once a week for five bucks a month. It gets you discord access. We just got a new fucking tier. Do you want to let it down? The, uh, Miho tier. If you have a friend who, uh, is broke. 
by any chance and just wants uh, to support a little bit. For one dollar, you can get in the Discord where we got hundreds of active fans mm -hmm. chopping it up. Lots of communities in there. Our boy Plank fan is the main mod. He'll uh, help you out find uh, what you need. Also, if you sign up, if you uh, if you have signed up for the Patreon by chance and you didn't get into the Discord, it's just uh, an email thing. Just message us on Patreon and we'll get that sorted out for you. Yeah, if you, uh, it's also once you sign up for Miho, it's the first pinned post. It's the very first one. It's got a permanent link in there um, for people who sign up only, so you can get into that Discord. But if you have any issues, reach out on Patreon and we will get it taken care of. Check out the sketch, um, Big Fat Frog. Please look at that. Give that a watch. Um, I don't have any shows. I have nothing to plug. Um, Thomas, you got anything to plug? No, no. I got <laughs> nothing going on with my life. Bye, baby. Bye.